Possibly the most dramaturgically watertight event you'll ever attend. <laughs> In about 30 minutes or 65 minutes, we're going to vote with these ballots and read a confession. It's all going to be delightful, and we're going to raise some money for the ACLU and yeah. Yeah. So, without further ado, I give you Villain Woo! God. Mm. <laughs> a little drink. Yeah, she's, she's going to need this drink because I didn't give her mic stands. Here you go. <laughs> Oh. <clears throat> what's gonna happen? I'll tell you what's gonna happen. <laughs> Philip was found smothered under 1,201 pounds of moist candy corns at 3 a.m. on hump day last week. I'm sure you'll be humbled to see so many sympathetic faces here today. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry, ma'am, excuse me. Did you just snort? Um, Philip wouldn't be humbled. Who are you kidding? <laughs> That's and you are? I'm Lynn. Linoleum. I'm an ice sculptress. I'm a Trump supporter. Oh, that's a profession. <laughs> Philip and I were co-investors in a new casino, and I was his closest friend. You? You are his closest friend? Ha! Pardon me? And who are you, sir? My name is Orson. Orson Buggy. <laughs> Movie producer, world traveler, and occasional judge at Scotch Egg Flavored Milk Dust Festivals. <laughs> Philip and I have been friends since we were 11 years old. I was, and still am, his closest friend. Oh, really? Well, you spend most of your time in Kathmandu, and I live next door, so I was closest. What? Well, we'll see about that. Orson, sweetheart, calm down. <laughs> and you are? I'm Rhoda. Rhoda Pony. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> I gonna fuck a horse. <laughs> for Kazam Cosmetics. <laughs> Feeling old? Kazam, now you're dead. <laughs> They're still in litigation. <laughs> I've been in all of Orson's most successful films, and Philip was my dear, dear friend. We both were his dear friends. We, we both were. Yes, both of us. <laughs> oh, say can you sit? Just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> too soon? Too soon. <laughs> that was wonderful. Well, I, I remember frequently driving Mr. DeBlanks to your house, Mr. Buggy, but that was years ago. After your red ass baboon riding incident, everything changed. <laughs> oh, wow. I'm sorry, sir. Who are you? Oh, my name is Aaron. Aaron Matires. <laughs> Matires. I was no <laughs> Scottish. <Right. laughs> I, I, I was Mr. DeBlake's trusted chauffeur and confidant. We almost never had the glass up in the limousine because Mr. DeBlanks enjoyed chatting with me while I drove him from place to place on one particular long ride from Pacoima, Illinois to Sheboygan. Who remembers where Sheboygan is? He even sat in the passenger seat for part of the trip. I see. Well, uh, I, 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 I know you must uh, all miss him terribly we since do. he's dead. Yes, we do. I do. Um, I certainly do. We had so many plans for the future. After the casino was finished, we planned to open a semen slide park. Oh. And throw some jokes. I know you would have wanted that. Listen to yourselves. You all pretend that you were close to him or shared some special bond or connection. Philip the Blanks was not friends with any of you. Not you, Bob Raffles, his estranged cousin. Not either of you, 
bus and buggy or rode a pony. Because <laughs> you just knew you just needed his money to try to pull yourself out of bankruptcy after that multi-million dollar flop turtle parade. <laughs> and it certainly wasn't BFFs with you, his chauffeur. What? I'm sorry, who are I'm you? I'm Fonda. Fonda Jules. <laughs> ah, and I'm Philip the Blank's wife. What? 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 No, no, you are not. <laughs> <laughs> well, this was a yes and. We, we, we were engaged to be married. We just couldn't set a date until the casino was done. Engaged? To Philip? No, she wasn't. No, you weren't. Well, well, you all weren't you. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> he hadn't actually proposed yet, but he had bought the ring. It was a 525,600 carry. <laughs> carry winter time. And it was beautiful. <laughs> I saw it by mistake when I was looking in his safe. <laughs> when you were what? Looking in his safe. With him, of course. He was showing me the records and maps of his vibranium mile mines in Zamunda. Yay! <laughs> That's your word. I think he thought one of you was going to do something terrible to him and he wanted to warn me. I think one of you lured him into in and out last week and that was the end of it. <laughs> How can you say that? I don't care if you were his fiance or his wife or his bedpan. You are not going to stand there and accuse me of any such thing. This is not the time or place for such accusations. <laughs> Miss Jules, please, I suggest that you rein in your imagination. Imagination? Imagination? Imagination. 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 Sorry. I didn't get that I'm, down here. Wait. I am not imagining or imagining or modeling anything. <laughs> I'm not saying my orangutan galloped in my vagina. Or, <laughs> no, it is. No, it is. That would be using my imagination. <laughs> no. What I'm saying is based on facts. <laughs> You're accusing someone in this room of pastry side? <laughs> of luring Philip de Blanks to his untimely demise under 1,201 pounds of moist candy corn? That's simply absurd. <laughs> Aaron, Mr. Matthias, did you drive Philip to uh, in and out last hump day? No, no, I did not. He sometimes liked to take his other car. He called it the chartreuse butt plug he drove in the husband's car. So, you don't have an alibi? An alibi? Why do I need an alibi? I had nothing to do with any of this. Besides, you own that restaurant, don't you, Mr. For Apples? Oh, he does. He does. You, you do? do? My company does, yes, but we own several Chinese restaurants. That one used to be Queefing Cunts. <laughs> My company bought it a few months ago. We reopened it. Your company? Yes. I write fortune cookies for a living, and my company manages a few restaurants. Oh, and how has business been? Um, up until last week, it was fine. Thank you for asking, actually. I wasn't asking because I, I was concerned, <laughs> Mr. Frapples. I was asking because it seems you might have had a reason to invite him there if your company needed financial help. Money isn't always a motive. A motive. <laughs> <laughs> a 
Yeah? A Morty, Mr. Buggy. Well, what is Mr. Frapples? Love? Revenge? Well, I'm sure I don't know, but I don't have a motive. <laughs> Sometimes it sounds like you're having a stroke. Well, <laughs> it might be happening. <laughs> Neither do I. I don't have a motive either. Well, I certainly don't. No, do I. I'm innocent. <laughs> of course you are. All of you are 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 blameless, mm. and so am I. Mm. I guess all that moist candy corns just <laughs> fell from the sky. How did you say you met Philip? I didn't say. Mm. Is it a secret? It's not a secret, um, no, but no one asked, so why would I have brought it up? How does anyone meet anyone? Why is it important? <laughs> we need to get to the bottom of this. I think Lynn has a point. Moist candy corn doesn't just fall from the sky. Someone wanted Phillips money. <gasps> but how do we... Oh, no. <laughs> We need an interrogation. <laughs> like on that cop show, NCIS, Butts, Nebraska. <laughs> Coming this fall to CBS. Uh, we, need, we each need to say how much we knew Philip when we saw him last. La last. What is he? Last. 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 <laughs> oh, you've got to be pissed at him. Even the cat is. So mad. When we saw him at last, and what we were doing last, uh, hump day, when the moist candy corns fell from the sky, or the ceiling, or whatever Machu Picchu Jesus' house. <laughs> Well, since I have nothing to hide, I'll go first. I have worked for Mr. DeBlanks for 51 years. I saw an ad in the weekly nipple dildo that read, <laughs> Driver Wanted. I worked as a fluffer and also as an Elton John engineer. <laughs> That's the same thing. But I, yeah, I thought that was you. But. Oh, no, I was saying Fluffer Elton John and yeah. the same thing. <laughs> Every once in a while, I try to get smart. <laughs> I'm sorry. It looks, no, it looks really good on you. Thank you. Smart is really good for you. Thank you. This made me look skinny. You should get us a Fluffer one. Okay, I'm sorry. Please go on. <laughs> well, uh, I, I was looking for something different, so I put on my best aubergine suit <laughs> with a urinal print necktie. <laughs> And I, I took a fuchsia cab up to Mr. DeBlank's house on uh, Lickin' Prince Tickler Hill, you know, <laughs> up there, next to Butt Hill, I don't say his name. The job interview went great, and I thought, hold up Aaron, you gonna get this job. <laughs> and I was right, I got it. I started the next Thursday, and I've been there ever since. Congratulations! What? Why? You got the job from one interview. That's pretty great. Oh. Uh, <laughs> it was also 51 years ago. <laughs> now, y'all can happen in 51 years. She has a point. Yeah. It's a technical term. It is. It's a technical term. So, Mr. Matthias, how were things between you and Philip Lankley after 57 years of working for him? Oh, things were fine. Mr. DeBlanks was a good employer. He was generous with me. 